So every lane change comes with a little bit of risk, right? You see that person ahead of me, that was pretty aggressive. What's the point in that except setting yourself up for maybe an accident or a traffic ticket? And I don't know if you could see, they just went back to the left. So they're in a hurry to get nowhere. I almost guarantee by the time we get to that light up there, and there they are, we're gonna be at the exact same place. So they gained maybe literally five seconds by doing all that nonsense with the lane change. All right, everybody. Welcome to the left lane change anxiety buster video where we are going to do a whole lot of left lane changes. Don't worry, we're gonna have another full length video with left lane changes, right lane changes, freeway lane changes. But today is gonna be everything left lane changes. So why do we make lane changes? Well, we make lane changes to get to where we need to be. For example, let's say I need to make a left up here. Well, I can't make a left from this lane. So if I want to make a left at some point, I need to get over to the left lane. So let's go ahead, we'll do that. I'll get through this intersection. I'll put on my left signal, check my mirrors. I got a Tesla coming up, but they're not coming too fast. So as long as I accelerate a little bit into it without crowding the person in front of me and turn off my left signal, nice. So now that I'm in this lane, I can get to where I need to be, which is making a left turn at the light ahead. Now we're coming up here, we see some construction. Great thing I made a left lane change because I would have had to make one right there whether I wanted to or not. So that's another reason we make lane changes. Besides getting to where you want to go, sometimes your lane ends and you have no choice but to make a lane change. Sometimes it'll be because you want to pass a slower moving vehicle, right? Sometimes in the right lane, there's slower moving vehicles. So you can make a change to the left to get around them, right? Now with that said, you don't want to be weaving in and out of traffic, right? We make lane changes with a purpose to help us get to where we want to be. But we, want, we don't want to be doing this left and right and left and right leaving business, weaving business that is dangerous because anytime you're making a lane change, that means that you're potentially um, dealing with blind spots and going into other lanes of traffic with different um, speeds and scenarios. So every lane change comes with a little bit of risk, right? You see that person ahead of me, that was pretty aggressive. What's the point in that except setting yourself up for maybe an accident or a traffic ticket and I don't know if you could see they just went back to the left so they're in a hurry to get nowhere I almost guarantee by the time we get to that light up there and there they are we're gonna be at the exact same place so they gained maybe literally five seconds by doing all that nonsense with the lane change so no weaving unless you're dealing with baskets or something don't be weaving right all right let's go ahead and make a left lane change when it's safe. So let's do a little bit of what I like to call, uh, not I, we at Driver's Head Direct, call the mirror exercise, right? It's where you take quick glances in your mirrors and identify what's, a, what's behind you while still maintaining visibility of what's ahead of you. So right now I see that there's a small SUV directly behind me and in the left lane, if that's where I wanted to lane change, I see that there, a car just entered my blind spot and it looks like they're about to pass me. And then we come up to this red light, which you can't lose sight of that. I see brake lights. I see the cars ahead of me are slowing down. If I wanted to make a lane change here, I could, right? But it might not be the easiest because of all the slowing down. Every situation is a little bit different. It just depends on the traffic around you, the traffic light situation, any other obstacles on the road, speed limits, all, all those things come into play to help you decide when it's safe or not safe to make a lane change. All right, let's say I wanna make a left lane change here. Still got that car right behind me. The car that is in my blind spot now just went ahead of me. I'm gonna put on my left signal, let the car behind me know my intentions, check my mirrors, check over my left shoulder, nothing in my blind spot. I'm gonna get through this intersection here and then I'm gonna ease over into that left lane there. Did another blind spot check, turn off my turn signal once I've committed to that lane. Nice. That was a pretty, pretty smooth, pretty easy lane change. Good job, y'all. All right, y'all, let's practice a nice, easy left lane change. Remember, whenever we do a lane change, we want to remember the acronym SMOG, which helps us remember all the steps required by the DMV and just for safety whenever you want to make a lane change. 
so smog signal mirror over the shoulder then go so i'm already kind of aware of what's behind me using my mirrors but i'm going to go ahead and put on my signal let other people know my intentions i don't see anybody in my mirrors so at that point i look over my left shoulder nothing in my blind spot and i just very gently ease over into that left lane over about four or five seconds and that is about as easy as it gets that's a nice simple left lane change all right so let's go ahead when it's safe make a left lane change so again we put on our signal check our mirrors nothing in our mirrors we look over our shoulder and then we ease over into that left lane there and once we're fully in that lane we turn off our turn signal and that's a very simple left lane change left right left let's go ahead and make a left lane change when it's safe so put on my left signal mirrors over my left shoulder fade over to the left nice that was pretty smooth right maintain my speed maybe even increased it a tiny little bit just to kind of get into the flow of traffic i'm in the little bit faster lane here well i mean they're both the same speed but in general the left lane is known as the passing lane is the faster lane in comparison traffic on the right usually um, on the slower side traffic on the left moving pretty well right all right we want to make a left lane change a little bit of congestion here i can see in my rear view there's a big truck behind me i can see in the lane i want to go into on the left there that there's a couple cars so I've got to negotiate a lot of things. Most importantly is what's going on in front of me. So even though I want to make a lane change, my number one goal is to really be aware of what's directly ahead of me. Sometimes you get so caught up, caught up wanting to make a lane change, you know, you can't, uh, you can't start staring in your mirrors or looking over your shoulder and then forget about what's directly ahead of you. So again, anytime you're using your mirrors, looking over your shoulder, it's quick glances. Now I notice that the intended lane I want to go into is actually cleared up. So once I get through this intersection, I'm going to throw on my turn signal, check my mirrors, look over my left shoulder, and then just ease over over a period of a couple seconds into that lane. Once I'm committed, turn off my turn signal. Nice. That was a great left lane change. Great job, y'all. If I want to make a left lane change, I can do that. So go ahead and put my left signal on, look over my left shoulder. Good. Good. The old smog, right? Signal, mirror, over the shoulder. And if everything looks clear, then you can go signal, mirror, over the shoulder, go. Okay, so everything is so clear behind me this is a great beginner lane change opportunity right so i'm going to go ahead and put on my left signal check my mirrors look over my shoulder but i noticed while i'm in the middle of this lane change the light started to turn yellow then red turn off my signal right that's a good learning example that while you're doing your lane change things ahead of you can change you need to be aware of so knowing that i immediately kind of started slowing down even though i was in the middle of a lane change right so again, during these lane changes, really be aware of everything around you. Not, don't get just caught up looking in your mirrors and over your shoulder. Quick glances, you know, make sure that everything ahead of you is safe as well. All right, y'all, let us make a left turn at this light up here. So this is a lane change, left signal, check my mirrors to the left, over my left shoulder, into the turn pocket without touching the lane lines. Good, that's a left lane change into a left turn pocket. Hopefully by the time you're done watching this video, you, uh, you know your smog, right? You need to smog anytime you change lane positions, left lane change, right lane change, into turn lanes like we're gonna do now. Left signal, check my mirror over my left shoulder. Now, here's a good example of why people always say, why do you check over your left shoulder when you're going into a turn lane? because sometimes someone behind you will get really impatient and they'll try to pass you. They'll try to get in that turn lane before you. So you always look over. All right, let's make it my mission to make a lane change to the left. And again, I don't know how that's gonna play out. It really depends on how the traffic in the lane I wanna go into behaves. Left, right, left as we enter the green light here. So I see a Mercedes there to my left behind me in my blind spot now. So I'm kind of keeping an eye on them. I could let them know I want to make a lane change by putting my signal on. So let me do that. I put on my signal and maybe that'll give them a hint like, hey, I'll hurry up and get past him so that he can make a lane change. 
and they are, they're gonna move past me. I'm still really keeping focus of what's ahead of me, checking my mirrors. It looks clear there, I'm just gonna double check my blind spot, nothing there, and I just ease over, just glide over. Nice smooth lane change over a few seconds. Once I'm established in my lane, I turn off my turn signal. Nice, everything looks good. That was a nice smooth lane change where all the working pieces work together. Good job, everybody. Good, and when it's safe, I'm gonna make a left lane change. I see I've got a car coming up in the lane I wanna go into. And I got some construction up here, so I'm also being cautious, and I'm watching the light ahead of me. I don't wanna get so caught up trying to make this lane change that I break some other traffic law. And good, nice and easy through the, left, the intersection before the light turns red. Check my mirrors, I'm gonna look over my left shoulder. Signal, check my mirrors, look over my left shoulder, and fade to the left gotta keep my eye on that car there let's make another left lane change here over my shoulder nice good good and when it's safe let's make a left lane change now we're going downhill here so i gotta watch my speed a little bit because when you're going downhill you can start to speed in it unintentionally i'm also watching that crosswalk there make sure the light's not going to turn red on me all right, through the intersection, put on my left signal, check my mirrors. Now I do see a car coming behind me and they're speeding up. Yeah, I, I maybe could have gone, but I bet they would have had to slow down and they might have lane changed around me. Might not have been an auto fail in the test. Okay, now they're behind me, so I'll put on my signal, right? Check my mirrors, look over my left shoulder. Nice. Good, turn off the turn signal. Y'all doing a great job as we go through these intersections, little traffic checks. You know, you can go through about a thousand intersections and doing your traffic checks and you know, you'll never see anything bad and you'll wonder why the heck am I doing all these traffic checks. But I guarantee in your life at one point or another, someone will run that red light. And by you doing that traffic check, you will catch it out of the corner of your eye and you will break before you get T-boned. So it will save your life. It's a lot, a lot of work. Well, it's really not even a lot of work, but it's a lot of nitpicking, kind of traffic checking, but it will pay off someday, I guarantee it. Let's go ahead when it's safe, make a left lane change. I got a car coming up hot behind me. See that car coming fast? So I'm going to let them pass. I'm not going to try to lane change. Now I'll put my signal on. I got a couple cars behind me, but they're pretty far back. Let me get through this intersection first, though. All right, I'll put my left signal on now check my mirrors look over my shoulder good and turn off that turn signal now did you notice how i put my turn signal on there while i was in the intersection that's fine because that's letting people know that i'm about to left signal check the mirrors over the shoulder that's letting people know that i'm about to make a lane change i just didn't want to put the turn signal on before the lane change or excuse me before the intersection because that might confuse people they might think you're gonna do something at the intersection All right. so let's say I want to make a left lane change now and in order to do that I can see behind me so I'm already using my mirrors to kind of gather the situation I can see there is a boatload of cars in both lanes behind me so this might be a little bit more challenging and we won't know what it's going to be like till we get going here so primary focus ahead of me keeping my eyes on the mirrors with quick glances i think i have a chance to go so i put my left signal on i check my mirrors check my blind spot nothing there check it again here we go turn off my signal nice so what i thought was going to be a really tough lane change because the car behind me in the lane i wanted to go into wasn't going too fast it actually became became a very easy lane change Let's go ahead and make a left lane change. Put my left signal on. No one in the intended lane I want to go into. Look over my left shoulder. Keep my eye though on that car in the left turn lane there. Good, right? You, I have the right of way, but you want to make sure that they're not, you know, doing something kind of silly. Maybe they don't see you for some reason. So just kind of, you know, be aware of your surroundings. Okay, enough talk. We got a lane change we have to make because look, there are parked cars. So I put on my left signal, I'm checking my mirrors, looking over my left shoulder. Good, beautiful. So that was a lane change we had to make because there's gonna be some parked cars blocking us in the lane we're trying to get into. 
Great job, y'all. You're ma making me so proud right now. You don't even know. I'm gonna make this nice 10 to 12 mile per hour turn into the rightmost lane, double check over for cross traffic and accelerate into the turn. Beautiful. And once I establish, then I check this mirror because I kind of want to see what's the traffic situation behind me. Because what if I want to make a lane change? Now I already kind of know what's going on behind me. I see a big white truck there. Gauging the speed of that truck, I think they're going a little faster than me. So if I want to change over, that will impede them. So I'll let them pass. And since I want to go over to that lane, though, I'll go ahead, I'll put my signal on, the first part of smog, right? Signal mirror over the shoulder, go. Let them know I intend to get over. That'll probably help them kind of clear the way for me. After that, it looks clear. I'm just going to double check my blind spot to the left and just ease over nice and gently, not abruptly. And once I'm fully in that lane, I'm going to turn off my turn signal. Beautiful. And intersection, left, right, left. Gorgeous. Nice. Good, that was a good lane change. Had a you know minor obstacle with that truck, not a big deal. Put my signal on, they knew I wanted to lane change. They kind of did their business, cleared the way for me, double checked my mirrors, looked over my shoulder when it was safe. Nice, smooth lane change to the left. All right, so I'm going straight here. It looks like there's some construction with my lane ending. I'm gonna have to make a left lane change. So I put on my left signal. Now, if someone lets me in, yeah, they're slowing down. So I still check over my shoulder, but the person behind me was great. They let me in, give them a little wave. Every once in a while in this crazy world, you see some courtesy and it makes you just feel a little bit better about humanity and it makes you want to return the favor. So next time I have the chance to let somebody in, I'll definitely do that. That was great. Great example too of a lane ending and you're forced into a lane change. But th that doesn't mean you can just force your way over. You've got to move over when it's safe. If I would have had to stop there and wait for an opening, I would have had to stop there. That's just how it works. Up ahead, I see an obstacle. I want to make a left lane change to get around this car that's trying to park. Check my mirrors, look over my shoulder, nice and smooth. Beautiful. Now, because I was paying attention, I saw that a good half a block before it became a problem. If you're not paying attention, that's gonna creep up on you, and then you're gonna have to figure it out last second, right? But by paying attention, by taking in the big picture, which you should be doing when you're driving, right? You're always looking down the road 10, 15 seconds or a couple blocks, just taking in the big picture so you know what's going on. That way you can react to obstacles before they become issues, right? All right, I wanna make a left lane change here and uh, we are not in Scranton, Pennsylvania for you office fans, even though this might look familiar to you. They film a lot of the uh, driving scenes on this street for the office, but I wanna make a left lane change. So I put my left signal on, check my mirrors, look over my left shoulder and ease over. That's a pretty simple lane change. Turn off that turn signal. Nice, wasn't too much drama there. That was pretty nice and smooth. However, I want to go back to the right. Now again, in, in real life, I would recommend find the lane you need to be in and stick to it as much as you possibly can. You don't want to be going back and forth. It's just not safe and not too beneficial for anybody. And if everyone was making multiple lane changes, weaving back and forth, it would really just congest things and screw things up. But for example's sake, I'm going to make another right lane change here so we're coming up we got red lights ahead of us and I got a car right behind me it would be kind of a jack move right now for me to change to the right because that car behind me would have to brake pretty hard to uh, stop so I mean I guess I said it was a jack move but it also be a bad thing to do on your test definitely a point off potentially an auto failed if I want to make a lane change I'm already aware that there is a lot of traffic behind me this is gonna be pretty difficult so I'll go ahead and throw my signal on and I see the red car in the lane that I want to go into is giving me a little room here. I'm gonna look over my left shoulder and I'm just gonna ease into that gap because they're kind of backing off. And there we go. And that was a pretty difficult lane change. That was me coming up to a red light so I had to be slowing down. But because the red car behind me that I wanted to fit in front of was easing off and kind of making room for me I was able to take that gap without impeding their, their progress. They were a very courteous driver and let me merge in there. Alrighty, 
let's go ahead and head up this way when it's safe we're gonna make a left lane change now the key with the lane changes is you want to kind of maintain your speed you can't go over the speed limit and you also don't want to impede the flow of traffic I want to go to the left here but there's someone that just entered my blind spot I'll put my left signal on so the guy behind me knows I want to go over but once this guy's out of my blind spot now the guy behind me just shifted over so now if I were to go over I would impede him so I just go I'll turn off my signal let them pass me keep my eye on this car up here once they're past, I'm going to put my signal on again, check my mirrors. Since I want to go to the left, I'm going to look over my left shoulder, nothing there, and ease over. Perfect. And turn off the turn signal. Now normally during a lane change, right, we talk about how you want to maintain your speed or accelerate. But there was an example where during the lane change, the light ahead was red, cars were slowing down, so I had to actually reduce my speed. So every situation will be a little bit different. In general though, if you're flowing freely, like on the freeway or just an open road with no red lights or anything like that, your lane changes, you pretty much maintain your speed, maybe even increase a little bit just to make sure you can keep the flow of traffic with the lane you're entering into. Well, let's, uh, let's go ahead and try a lane change here. This is, again, this is Ventura Boulevard right before rush hour, so it's busy, but it, it's definitely busier at times. But it's gonna be a little challenging to make a lane change here because there's so much going on, right? And uh, what we're gonna do is the same steps as usual, and we're just gonna have to wait for that gap to open up before we can make our lane change. So again, I wanna get to the left here. I see there's a mile of cars behind me in the lane I wanna go into, no one directly behind me. And then in the lane to my right, there's a bunch of cars too. With all these red lights, and let's see, I'm stopping here because I cannot block the intersection. So I gotta stay behind the intersection until I know I can get across. Because if my light turns red here, we'll be in trouble here. And obviously that would be a fail on your test, but also that's how gridlock, that's how uh, gridlock happens, right? So just being patient. Okay, I see the light ahead went green, so I'm hopeful that I'll be able to get across, but it's the same thing. I'm not gonna go till I know 100% I'll be able to get across. Now I see that car going. I look left, right, left. Beautiful. All right, let's get back on that left lane change train here. So best thing I can do is put on my left signal, really watching the traffic ahead of me, maintaining my speed, look over my shoulder, good just ease in there nice i didn't disrupt the flow of traffic person behind me didn't have to slow down i didn't impede their progress everything was nice and smooth that was pretty nice example of it's challenging to make that lane change when traffic is busy but as long as you're signaling most people will actually cooperate with you and let you in right now you got some nonsense in front of me here where people are making lane changes back and forth so again, you're just keeping your eyes peeled because you can see there's some really impatient people in front of us. What can you do, right? Good. Now, if I wanna make a left lane change, which I would advise when there's streets like this, look at three lanes and there is a bunch of commercial buildings over here, lots of restaurants, driveways. There's gonna be a lot of cars coming in and out of this rightmost lane. So I'd rather be in the left lane if possible or the middle lane. So I'll put on my left signal, check my mirrors, look over my shoulder. Check my blind spot deeper too for these people. Get over before the intersection. Turn off my signal. Left, right, left. Beautiful, a lot going on. See, look at that, a stalled car. This is why you don't wanna be in the right lane when you can avoid it, especially in areas like this where there's so much commerce going on, right? Good, train tracks, nice and easy. Little bumpity bump there. Good job, y'all. And a green light left right left now see up ahead i can already see there's a parked car in the lane i'm in i have to make a lane change and there's even a sign saying that this lane is going to end eventually so i put on my left signal that red car in my blind spot there perfect turn off my and wave they saw what i saw they realized hey ben's got some parked cars to deal with why not i be a sport and let ben in so thank you very much and that's the courtesy you're gonna see a lot. A lot of people you know, say that drivers are rude and aggressive and mean. And yeah, there of course are, and those drivers stand out. But the majority of drivers are actually 
like really decent human beings that just want to get along, don't want drama, and they're going to work with you to make your lane changes. And that was a great example of someone else working with me to make my life easier. Good job, y'all. Now, further up ahead, I see a bicyclist in the bike lane. So this is a good opportunity for us to talk about this situation. In the state of California, there is a three feet for safety act where you have to give bikers at least three feet of safety. If there wasn't room here for me to fit by this biker safely, I would even lane change to the left. But here he's got his own lane, but I'm just gonna slow it a little bit and hug the left side of my lane just to make sure he's got that full three feet of safety there. Good, so when you see a bicyclist, just remember you gotta give them a nice three foot, if not more, cushion. And again, I'm aware that he's gonna be coming up behind me, passing me on the right here. And if, there, if it wasn't safe, I don't wanna crowd him off the road. I would make a lane change um, to the next lane just to make sure that he had that safe space cushion. Not only is it safe to do and the right thing to do, it is the legal thing to do, right? So let's see, we're gonna, we're gonna pass them again. So I guess we're gonna get two for one on this example. So, man, and you can see the challenges that cyclists deal with. Look at all these people turning in and out of driveways. And this is a major street coming into rush hour here. Same thing, I'm just making sure I give him plenty of space. Good, nice and easy. So that's a pretty easy example because with the dedicated bike lane, um, nice wide lanes here, wasn't too tight. But again, you're just aware that you wanna give them a nice safe space cushion. Good, great example, y'all. So we're coming up here. I see a bicyclist in the bike lane up here, right? Now there's a three feet for safety act in California. So if I'm gonna pass this bicyclist, I have to give him at least three feet or if I can, I'll just lane change around him. That's probably the safest case. If it's possible, then I don't have to crowd him at all. And then I can just go back when it's safe. Nice. So whenever you pass a cyclist on the road, make sure you give them a minimum of three feet. But if there's not room, then you want to lane change around them so that they can be safe. Great, great example, y'all. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and left lane change. Now, I wanna get behind this white car. I don't wanna crowd them though, right? So as I move over, I'm gonna make sure I create a safe gap. You have to anticipate that maybe they're gonna slam on the brakes, right? So I'm gonna check my mirror, look over my shoulder, notice that red car, but they're pretty far back. Good. Perfect, see how I came in, turn off my signal. See how I came in and created a little space? You don't wanna get right behind someone right on their tail because heaven forbid they have to brake hard for some reason, you're inevitably gonna rear end them. So always come in behind another car, create a safe gap and always assume that they might slam on their brakes. That's why you need that three seconds a gap, right? All right, so we need to make a left lane change going under this overpass here. Gets a little bit of a shadow here. I see a car kind of coming up in my blind spot. I'll put my left signal on, see if that helps them either move past me or back off and let me in. And yeah, see, I put on my signal. Now they're moving past me. A car come right in front of me though. I gotta slow down. And now I have to change what I'm gonna do because now this red car is there. But now that red car slowed down. That was really awesome. That red car is a champ. Thank you, red car. So that was a great example of a little bit of everything going on there. Uh, I put on my signal, that black car sped past me, which was great, they helped me out. But then before I could move over, a car came in my lane and made me really slow down, which really disrupted the flow of my lane change. So I was about to abort my lane change. And then that red car behind me, who's still behind me, was an excellent defensive and courteous driver they created a little extra space for me and waited for me to get over. They kind of saw the whole situation unfold from their point of view and realized like, hey, I can help that guy out even if he is a dork. So thank you, red car. All right, we're here stopped in a little bit of, it's not rush hour quite, or right by the college. So there's probably a class or something just got out. It's pretty stacked up here. I wanna make a left lane change. Now, let's go over a uh, mistake sometimes new drivers, even experienced drivers make, and that's with timing of the turn signals. There's two things we don't wanna do. We don't wanna turn our turn signal on last second, 
right? So if I already know that I wanna make a lane change, I don't wanna put my signal on and move over instantly or move over simultaneously because that's not giving anybody a heads up what my intentions are, right? So if I wanna make a left lane change, I'm gonna put it on now and not dart over immediately. Yeah, let everyone know what's up. Now I'm just trying to find a gap here and I can't tell if that person's letting me in. I don't think they are, but they might change. Yeah, now they've kind of backed up a little bit. So I'm gonna look over my left shoulder. That was great. Thank you, sir or ma'am or whomever. Thank you so much. So that was good. That That is why you wanna put your signal on and leave it on for a couple seconds just to let other people know what you're doing so they can work with you, right? Most people are good people, courteous people. They just wanna get home safely just like you do and they're gonna work for some cohesion to make things easier. Now I see white car maybe coming out now. They're gonna wait for us. We're still cautious, you never know, someone might dart out of there. And looking left and right, good. All right, one concept I wanna talk about is when to turn your signal off, right? You always wanna keep your turn signal on until you fully committed yourself to the lane you're changing into. Some people will turn off that turn signal before they're all the way over. But again, remember your signal is kind of a warning to other drivers to let them know what you're doing. If someone's not paying attention, they might not realize you're moving over into that lane. And if you turn off your turn signal too early, they might think that they can go into that lane. You'll end up colliding, right? So let's go ahead, left, right, left. Let's do a left lane change here. And I'm gonna make sure I keep my signal on the whole time. Now there's someone coming in front of me. See how they turned off their turn signal? That was way too early, right? They should have left it on until they were fully committed to, to make it clear what they were doing. So I'm checking this car. looks like they're speeding up. That's fine. Look at now they're all over the place. I'm gonna back off while I come over. Man, there was a lot going on there. And that was a great example. And all I did to help myself not run into a problem myself was I slowed down a little bit to give myself, my brain, a little more time to process everything and just backed off. So I created some extra space with the cars around me. So that was a great example of watching other drivers kind of behave badly and then what we could do to deal with the situation while we were in the middle of a lane change. Great job, yo, that was a great learning example. Nice. And then that lane change, that's another one, didn't use the signal at all, kind of came last second, so it was a little bit inconsiderate. Again, good thing I'm paying attention because it didn't really caused me too much harm. I was already well aware that they were doing something a little bit fishy and I just slowed down a little bit more, created a little more space. But had I not been paying attention, let's say I was coming in really hot, really fast, that car could have gotten rear-ended because they just kind of came over, didn't signal or anything like that, right? Some great examples happening uh, real time. Sometimes you can drive for two hours and nothing really silly happens. And then other times, in five minutes, three silly things will happen. Left, right, left. Good, a lot of good stuff here. Another concept we wanna talk about, and I think this is directly related to anxiety, is the need that new drivers feel that they have to hurry up and make a lane change, right? They feel, I put on my signal, and now I gotta make this lane change fast no matter what. And that's not true. You actually wanna take your time right? Don't rush it. And if you have that in mind, it'll really help kind of cut down the, on the anxiety. First of all, when you put on your turn signal, you got to remember that that turn signal has a purpose. You're alerting all the drivers around you what you intend to do. It's kind of like a beacon or a flashing light that catches everyone's attention. And then in the next second, they can determine what it is that you're intending to do. And the second after that, they can decide what they want to do, right? So I'm gonna take it nice and easy here. I've got this stopped truck here. They're in their lane though, so as long as I go a little bit slower, just looking for someone coming out, good. All right, so let's make a left lane change. And now notice, I'm not gonna throw my signal on and then dart right over into the left lane. I'm going to get through this intersection. I'm gonna throw my signal on and now take my time. There's a car right there, right? Coming up in my blind spot. Now they know that I wanna to go to the left so they can start deciding what do they wanna do? Do they wanna back up or do they wanna speed up they want to speed up and get in front of me and that's fine so actually now i'm going to move in right behind them right nice and easy looking over my left shoulder 
and turn off my turn signal. Great. And there was no rush, no hurry on my part. I put on my signal and I just kind of let the situation play out. And as soon as it was safe for me to go over, then I just moved over nice and gracefully. Good. So what else? What are other things that we don't want to do when we're making a lane change? Well, we don't want to be staring in our mirrors, right? And why is that? Well, first of all, if I'm staring in my mirror, I'm not noticing what's most important, which is what's ahead of me. That's always kind of your primary focus for being safe. You got to know what's ahead of you. But also when you stare, you tend to drift. And in general, you will drift in the direction you're staring. So if I'm staring in my right mirror like this while we're driving, I will probably drift to my right. If I'm staring in my left mirror while we're driving, I will probably drift to my left, right? So definitely don't want to stare. It's not safe and it'll lead to you getting outside your lane by accident. Left, right, left. Uh, likewise, our shoulder checks. We talk a lot about doing our shoulder checks or blind spot checks, right? A lot of people, when they look over their shoulder, they look too long. It's the same problem. When you look over your shoulder, it needs to be quick chin to shoulder. If you're staring over your shoulder, you are losing sight of what's ahead of you. And um, again, you might drift in the direction that you're looking. So if I'm looking over here, I might start drifting. See how I drifted to the left there? Because I was looking over my left shoulder too long, right? Another thing you gotta remember is your arms are connected to your body, right? in your hands to your arms and your hands to the wheel, right? When you check over your shoulder, you gotta remember it is chin to shoulder, chin to shoulder. A lot of people, when they check over their shoulders, they turn their whole body, they literally twist like this. And what happens to the wheel when you twist like that, right? Do you see how the wheel went with my hands? So if you're twisting your whole body to look over your shoulder to check your blind spots, you might inadvertently move the wheel and also drift out of your lane, potentially into oncoming traffic. So again, when you check your blind spots, boom, boom, chin to shoulder, right? Nice and quick, nice and easy. Trust me, if there's something in your blind spot, that split second is all you need to pick it up, right? And also with your blind spot, your peripheral vision allows you to see a lot more than you might imagine. You're seeing next to you, but you're also seeing like kind of out and behind you as well, right? Good, so mirrors, quick glances, blind spot checks, right? Quick chin to shoulder glances. Great, so we're really going over some really important concepts. Through traffic, merge left. All right, so instead of waiting to the last second, I'll put on my left signal, check my mirror, mirror over my left shoulder, and ease over over these thick, fat, dotted lines and you see those lines they're about to turn solid and anytime that you see that left mirror left shoulder any, anytime you see those thick lines you can see that eventually the line will turn solid indicating that you're going to be forced into that direction of traffic because you're not supposed to cross over solid lines so you'll notice that a lot today when we're doing our lane changes it's always over broken lines or dashed lines the only exception to that rule might be when we go into a driveway. Sometimes you'll have to cross over a bike lane with solid lines, but we'll deal with that when we get there. Otherwise, you should not be crossing over solid lines, right? All right, here we go. Working on our lane changes. Let's talk about other things that we don't want to do while making lane changes. You never want to cut someone off, right? You never want to go right in front of someone who's coming up faster than you. For example, if I were to make a left lane change right now, besides that there's someone in my blind spot, had I gotten in front of them, they would have had to break really abruptly, right, to stop. So we'd never want to do that. If you go in front of someone, you can't impede their progress. You got to give them plenty of space to safely um, slow down behind you if need be, right? So you always want that three second gap. You want to try to create that three second gap with traffic behind you, but also with traffic in front of you. And it's really three to four seconds. When you're in a larger vehicle, you want to get it closer to that four seconds. And if there's bad weather, you can add seconds to four or five second gap. A lot of students are always wondering how the heck do you compute? What's a three second gap, right? Well, let's make sure that I'm three seconds behind this little red or maroon SUV in front of me. And how we do that is we just pick a fixed point on the road and once that SUV in front of me passes that fixed point, 
then we're going to count and see how long it takes for us to pass that same fixed point, right? So we've got to get moving a little bit in order to do this. And hopefully we'll be able to do that after this red light. Okay, so when this uh, SUV goes through the green light, I'm going to start counting, you know, one Mississippi, two Mississippi, and then we'll see how long it takes for me to go through the green light. So let's see, the red car now. One Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi, four. So three seconds. Right now I'm three seconds. If we were going faster, let's say we got up to 45, 50 miles an hour, obviously that three second distance will be much greater. So time is a great measure because it accounts for how fast you're going, right? Good job, y'all. A little bit of congestion here. Can be some great examples i'm sure that we're gonna come across as we navigate these roads the three o'clock which isn't quite rush hour but in la these days it's almost rush hour all the time and the closer you get to four o'clock it's basically rush hour so we're stacked up pretty good here um, making lane changes could definitely be a challenge but we'll we'll do a couple so let's say i need to get to the left here and i do and it's really kind of stop and go so it's going to be a little bit artful to get over but get through this the person in front of me wants to go over so let them do their thing now i'm going to put on my left signal now looks like a car behind me if i went over right now it'd be a little dangerous because what if that car right there slammed on their brakes if they slam on their brakes i'm going to rear end them so i have to let them i'll just turn off my signal till we get through this intersection and i'll try it again i need to let them get ahead of me again create a little bit more space Again, not safe, not safe. So I just don't do it. Just because I really want to go over there doesn't mean I'm going to force it. In fact, they, uh, well, I can't do that either. So that's a great example. I really wanted to get to that left lane, let's say, to make a left up there or something. I couldn't just force myself over because had I gone over and really forced the issue, I could have easily rear-ended that car. So great example of Sometimes you just don't make the lane change. You live to see another day. I'll just keep going straight and make my lane change on the next block. Do I maybe lose five minutes of my life? Yes, but I'd rather lose five minutes of my life than the rest of it, right? I know it sounds a little extreme, but there's some truth to that. All right, while we're doing a lot of lane changes here, why don't we talk about the center left turn lane? Now, if you watched our left turn video you saw quite a few examples of that but today we're focusing on the lane change aspect of that so we've got a center left turn lane up here and we're going to use that so that we can make a left turn into one of these private driveways so left signal mirrors over my left shoulder ease over nice now you can drive into this up to 200 feet so i don't want to go much further than that and I want to turn into this auto repair place. And I can't impede anybody's progress, but here's a nice gap. One, two, over my shoulder one more time. Nice, great job, y'all. Anyway, back to lane changes. We're in a parking lane. We want to lane change into the driving lane. So what are we gonna do? Well, I'm gonna take off my emergency brake. I'm gonna put my car into drive right i've already kind of checked my mirrors i already know what's going on behind me and i see a white truck coming so i'll actually just wait a second or two for them to get going here but once i get a little bit closer and about to pass me i'll go ahead and put my left signal on so they know my intention is to leave the curb check my mirrors again look over my left shoulder nothing in my blind spot and just gently pull away from the curb and turn off your turn signal if it doesn't turn off for you nice and that's a lane change from a parking lane into a driving lane. All right, y'all. Thank you so much for watching today's left lane change anxiety buster video. Hopefully you have enough lane change examples under your belt now to get out there and do some yourselves with a little bit of confidence. Uh, don't forget, we've got some more lane change videos coming your way, working on some right lane change videos, freeway lane change videos. So we've got more coming, but get started with this. See if you can improve your skill and boost your confidence. 
from Ben and everybody at Drivers at Direct. Thank you so much for watching. We really do appreciate you guys, and we'll see you soon in the next video. Take care, guys.